Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. For those who's new, my name is Christian and I'm crazy about plants. So it's probably been about maybe three months since you started your houseplant journey, maybe because of quarantine and you have about like five or 10 plants. Maybe you went overboard and have 50 plants by now, regardless how many plants you have. You're probably entering a stage now where you're gonna come across and you're going to need a few houseplant items in order for your plants to continue to be happy and for you to enjoy your houseplant journey. I know when I first started, you know, thinking that you only just need your pots, your plants, your soil and water. And for the most part, you can get through for the first three or four months of that. But eventually you're gonna come across things that your plants are going to need or that you're gonna to wanna to experiment and try new things with. So I'm here to kind of share what those items are so you have your plants and you definitely have your pots and whether you use a plastic container a terracotta pot or a decorative pot the key thing to keep in mind is making sure there's drainage holes in those pots in order for that water to drain through now when it comes to soil i did do a video of the different types of soil ingredients in order to make your mix or you can get your pre-packaged one so if you haven't checked that video i'll link a card right here besides your plant pot and soil i'm going to assume you guys also have a watering can as well as a mister. Now these guys you can get anywhere in the dollar store. Uh, watering can just kind of helps you water your plants a little bit more efficiently if you want to just, you know, water a certain section of your plants. Or you guys can do the old school way and just bring it to the sink or the bathroom and uh, use kind of a pail. Uh, a mister is great for obviously spraying your plants, uh, whether it's just to create a bit of mist and humidity around your plants. Like I use this to mostly mist my fiddly fig tree as well as my ficus altissima to kind of help promote some growth. This also comes very handy if you were to make your own insecticide soap to control any pests that you may have. When it comes to houseplant pests, you're going to experience a wide range of them. And I think the first type of pest I've ever experienced was fungus gnats, which are those black flies that typically fly around your plant. And I think most new plant people uh, experience this as their first houseplant pest. And that's because it's caused by having wet or moist soil in long periods of time. And I think as a newbie, we tend to overwater. So that is the reason why you see them flying around. Sometimes they're even talking and they're like flying in your mouth and that's really annoying. So what you wanna do is obviously try and get rid of them as soon as they start happening. I think the first thing when it comes to getting rid of the ones flying around, the easiest thing I would recommend is get yourself some sticky traps. These are really easy to use and really effective. They come in these uh, sticky strips. Sometimes you can actually get them in different shapes and it has these plastic stakes with it and you pretty much just put them in your plant that has a lot of that fungus gnats or around it and literally those guys flying around will get trapped in there and eventually die. So a very, very effective, you know, another way to also get rid of fungus gnats is just use leftover wine or um, apple cider vinegar and a bit of dish soap and put them around your plants and they'll like be attracted to that and uh, fly in there. Another houseplant pest that you're going to come across are mealybugs and I remember when I first encountered this, I looked up to see what was the most effective way to get rid of them. And surprisingly, it's an item that you'll hopefully have around your home uh, to kind of treat some wounds and infection. It is uh, pretty much rubbing alcohol. So you guys can get this at your local drugstore, again, or online. And what you typically do is just get a con swab or a Q-tip and dip it in alcohol swab and then go into your plant and attack and wipe that uh, mealybug off. Especially if you don't have a large infestation, it's really easy to kind of get rid of mealybugs. I find out of all the pests you can get rid of, mealybugs are probably the easiest ones and having rubbing alcohol handy in your home is definitely essential uh, and really useful uh, for other purposes as well. Rubbing alcohol is also great for making your own homemade insecticide soap. You now add maybe about a third of this in your mister, um, you know, the rest with warm water and then a few drops of dish soap and you have yourself a preventative like all-purpose insecticide soap. You know, if you don't want that, you can also just get one of these ones from Safers, which is what I use. And I typically use this for whenever I'm introducing new plants into my home. I will quarantine them now and then I will spray them down with this. It's a great all-purpose insecticide soap. Again, just a way to prevent any, you know, a pest that's on there right now from spreading. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of what I do. Another thing you're gonna wanna have in your cupboard, and hopefully you do if you like to cook, is you wanna have some cinnamon. And cinnamon is actually great for a couple of reasons. One is to deter any fungus gnats by sprinkling them on the soil. Another use for a cinnamon is to stop the spread of any fungus or wounds that's happening on your plant. So for example, on your stem, you know, if you happen to notice like big black spots in the middle and it's starting to spread, uh, sprinkling cinnamon on it will actually prevent that from fungus from spreading and killing your entire plant or that stem. So definitely handy to have around in your home. Also, if you like to cook, again, you know, cinnamon. Although I don't really cook, so I don't know what I would use cinnamon for other than to uh, treat any fungus on my plants. 
Another thing I would recommend that you have in your home is some hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is great for a couple of things. One is to get rid of those fungus gnats or any larva that's happening in your soil. So we spoke about all the flying ones that you guys can use and trap with the sticky trap, but sometimes there's larva and there's, you know, eggs living in the soil. And the way to kind of get rid of that is using hydrogen peroxide. So mixing this with your watering can, maybe filling your watering can about 20% and the rest water. And then when you need to water your plant, just water it really, really well and it'll kill all that larva, as well as anything that's going on within the root system. So especially if you feel like your plant has root rot, I've used hydrogen peroxide to kind of reboot a sick plant. So, you know, for example, my monstera, the Viciosa, I noticed that there was black leaves happening in the middle. And it wasn't like around the edges where you kind of know what's overwatered versus like there's something wrong with your plant. There's some fungus and there's some rotting that's happening in the system and you kind of need to clean that out and get rid of. Rather than me removing it from the pot and removing the old soil and looking at the root system, uh, I just wanted to kind of just clean that system out and wash it. So I use hydrogen peroxide with water and I water that plant. I also did it with my pilia. When I accidentally overwatered my pilia, I was afraid it was experiencing some root rot. Uh, so I used hydrogen peroxide and water and yeah, it kind of reboot the plant and uh, it was fine then. So you definitely want to have this around your home just for those uh, cases where you do end up overwatering or you have some root rot happening because chances are you're you're gonna experience that as well too, especially when you're a new plant parent and you tend to overwater. All right guys, so far we've been covering some items that you're gonna to wanna to need around your house in order to treat your plants, especially when it comes to pests or anything that's going on within the plants. But now we're gonna cover some items that I think are essential and to kind of help make your lives a little bit easier, remove the guessing work if that makes sense. I recommend definitely getting yourself a moisture meter. Now for the longest time, I didn't use moisture meter because I would always use the, you know, stick your finger in the soil as deep as possible, check to see if the soil is wet or dry, and then based on that, you know, water your plant if it needs to be. But I realized that I have a lot of plants now that are a little bit more sensitive to overwatering, as well as most of my plants are starting to get bigger, so I can't really get into the soil as deep as I want to. So this moisture meter is very effective because obviously it has these like longer, more skinnier prongs here that measures the moisture level of the soil all the way deep to the bottom of it too. So, you know, especially when it comes to like my philodendrons, I want to make sure that the soil is completely dry or almost dry before I decide to water it. So this moisture meter does come in handy. It's a three way moisture meter. You know, it measures the moisture in your soil, the pH level, and it also has kind of a light meter reading, but I mostly just use it for uh, measuring the moisture level. Uh, so it goes all the way from dry, moist in the middle and then wet on to the other side. So you just simply stick this to your plant and then it'll give you a reading. And I typically will wait until it gets to maybe like a one or a zero onto the dry side before I decide to water my plants. Most of my plants anyway, that prefer to be, uh, you know, completely dry before watering. The plants that need to be more consistently moist. This is great to just see if it's gonna be in the moist section or more in the dry or wet side. Uh, but yeah, definitely get yourself a moisture meter. Another item I also recommend is get yourself a hygrometer, which measures the humidity levels in your home, especially if you don't live in a tropical, humid climate like here in Canada, uh, especially during the winter season. This really comes in handy to kind of give you an idea where the humidity is in your home. Right now it's saying 57%, which is great because I typically like to have my place around like 50%. The plant seems to love it. They're happy about it, especially the calatheas and the ethereums. You know, obviously if my humidity level goes down 50%, I will use a humidifier to kind of increase that humidity up. I use this one by Lac Holmes. It's a top hill one and it's great. My plants love it. Uh, definitely comes in handy during the winter season. Again, you don't need to have a humidifier. You know, you can create a bit of humidity with your plants using the, you know, pebble, water and tray trick or a mister. But, but I have a lot of plants now and honestly, just keeping the humidity level consistent. I'm noticing a difference with my plants. You know, they're not as uh, crispy or as, uh, they're just thriving. They just feel like they're in their own environment. And that's what the humidifier does. It creates that humidity. Like I said, most plants that we we, you know bring indoors are from uh, tropical plants that come in an environment and climate that has a lot of humidity now if you're like me and you enjoy propagating houseplants you're gonna want to get yourself a few propagation stations I have a few different kinds here that I got all from Amazon uh, this one actually being my favorite I love the jar that's you know shaped like a, a you know 
milk jar and it comes in this like uh, brass uh, cage like uh, basket and uh, yeah and the, the opening is pretty huge so that way you know if your plants end up getting a lot of roots it's pretty open again I'll provide a link in the description below for some of these items that you guys can find but if you don't have propagation station you guys can just use like a glass that's you know whether it's uh, see-through or not see-through and just fill it with water but uh, I'm excited when it comes to propagating house plants because not only is it like a cheap and cost-effective way to make more plants, but it's also a great way to kind of give some plants to your friends or family. And right now, I'm propagating all these plants and the young pothos, the shade satins and dapses, as well as string of hearts, so that way I can get ready for a, hopefully a plant swap that's happening uh, soon here in the city. And uh, yeah, I decided to do that because it's, again, a great way to uh, get new plants uh, that you typically don't have to go to the store and just meet new people uh, who are in the community as well. So there you guys have it. Those are just a few plant essential items I recommend to have in your household, especially as you're going through your first year of being a plant parent. You know, looking back, I probably could have benefited a lot of this in my first year, like this moisture meter. I could have saved a lot of plants from being overwatered and dying if I had this handy, but that's okay. Like you, I'm still learning. And for those of you guys who have a little bit more experience, are there any additional household items or plant essentials that you think is important to have in your home? If you do, comment below and let us know what those items are. Other than that, enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.